Take it this way. <laughs> mm -mm. Ten thousand three hundred and seventy-eight feet. That's just under four thousand feet in elevation change, and about two point seven miles of cable travel from bottom to top. We do start off real slow. We're going to work our way up to an also very slow 13.5 miles per hour, just about 21 feet per second for a final top speed. Whoa. How many first timers I got on board today? It's pretty cool. All right, welcome guys. Welcome. Definitely one of the more unique things Albuquerque has to offer its incoming visitors. So what we see before us here, this is known as the Upper Sonoran Desert Valley. We have small trees such as yucca, pinon, and juniper. Lots of sage, bear grass, and Apache yeah, blue. We do have some Jeez. cacti as well. We do have choy cactus, garden cactus, and some hedgehog cactus. Now this vegetation will remain about this size so we get about 7,500 feet up the west face of the Sandias. Now if you folks are getting hot, you're more than welcome to reach up and open any of the windows you have above you. They do just push up and out. <laughs> So we do have a trail we're going over right here. This trail in 1964 was actually the old service road originally used to construct the first tower ahead. Brought big work trucks up that little tiny pathway to get that work done. They did finish construction of the first tower in 64 and at 232 feet tall, that there was New Mexico's tallest man-made object. Not too impressive, but cool nonetheless. Gonna be a slight swing and sway when we cross over this tower. This tower is gonna put us right around 7,010 feet in altitude. You see that trail down there? That's what he was talking about. <laughs> Dude, jeez! Right there's about as exciting as this ride gets. Right? It, it looks like it looks like that, that thing's right? falling down. It does. Oh. Cool rock formation. Check out that out. Opposite side of myself, we have a large boulder perched on a pile of rocks out there. Kind of resembles a golf ball being ready. Because it's lame. Like that. Sense creativity and named it golf ball. It made rock. it look like we were. It, it was freaking falling. Here, almost twice the size of cabin you folks are in. Give you an idea of how the perception is slightly deceptive from the distance of the tram car here. Now off to my side on top of this hill behind me, we have another formation in the shape of a cannon. Probably fit right on inside of here. To get a little bit higher, you actually be able to see sky in between the bottom rock and top rock. I've climbed up there a few times and sat right underneath that top rock. Do have what we named fish rock over here, kitty corner to myself. Tall flat faced rock, the line going through the center. Looks like it's about to topple right over. I've been here for five years, folks. I'm still waiting. All right, guys, I'm gonna point at one more rock formation, then I'm gonna stop pointing at rocks for a while, I promise. Off to my side, on the right-hand side of this canyon, we'd see what seems to be a tall stack of rocks that was not stacked up. Like all these formations I pointed out was caused by weather erosion, pretty much what's left behind. Now just behind there, we do see some taller vegetation, meaning we're going to be transitioning out of the Upper Sonoran Desert Valley, making our way into our next vegetation zone known as the Ponderosa Belt. Right here, we do have some bare rock. This was the only spot along the entire line of the train where they had to use explosives to help get this thing up. Now, unfortunately, we do got quite a bit of dead vegetation up there off to the right. The Sandia Mountains is subject to what's known as the Bark Beetle. It's a nasty little bugger that devastates forested areas. Are your ears popping? Hmm? I just popped them. Yeah. Working our way closer to that second tower, there are no more roads or trails leading up to it, meaning they had to use helicopter trip, bring all the material up there, all the workers get all the work done. They did something similar with the upper terminal building and to help lay all the cable. Over a period of two years, it took them 5,000 helicopter trips to build the tramway. 
They did finish construction in 66 with our first flight on May 7th of that year. At that time, it only cost them $2.1 million to build the entire tramway system. When we get up to Tower 2, that's going to put us up to 8,750 feet in altitude. Be another slight swing and sway when we cross. And for those of you who haven't been with us yet, folks, we're still not even going to be halfway there. Unlike the tower below at 232 feet tall, this tower here only stands at just over 80 feet tall. Both towers are drilled over 40 feet into the granite rock for stability and set at an 18 degree angle towards the city to help ease the transition over. It's going to look like a, it's falling again. It's going to be. Go. I'm not going to look this time. <laughs> that freaked me out. <laughs> All right, Tower 2 brings us into the first of three okay, that beautiful one canyons. That one doesn't look like it's moving. Yeah, this here is Big Canyon. If you look ahead of us, we do notice our sister Ooh, cabin approaching. Crap. When that cabin passes, that will mark the halfway point to the top. It's a great opportunity for pictures or funny faces. Now us and our sister cabin here are both connected to the same center hall cable, the center cable of the three that you see above us. The system is known as a double reversible jig back tramway, meaning there's only two tram cars, both of them go forward and reverse, have to operate at the same time as one another. And when leaving the upper terminal valley, it actually helps pull the one at the lower terminal out of its bay at the time of takeoff. Just as we had to slow down to 10 feet a second to safely cross that tower, those folks are gonna do the same. Guys, if you're afraid of heights, please do not look down. Just about 1,000 feet off the ground right now. Awesome. It'll get a little deeper when we get further. That's the bottom of Domingo Bob. Yeah. Here. That's the third king. That's too much of a breeze. Just let me wash it. All right, getting back up to normal operating speed. We do come across a lot of tall, jagged cliffs this side of Tower 2. Some of you folks may be wondering about rock climbers in the area. Um, I've been here for years. I still have yet to see anybody scaling these cliff sides behind me. Doesn't mean they don't do it. Now, I do know it is illegal to drill your own pit points in this granite rock, meaning if they were to come out here, they would have to attempt these cliff sides by freehand. Um, probably why I haven't seen much. There are recommended uh, pre-drilled by the state pick points up to the south of the upper terminal building up there and uh, off the road Manal area called Whitewash. Also a great area to learn how to repel. Now leaving Big Canyon, we're now going to be entering Echo Canyon. The cool thing about this middle canyon yeah. here is it has the only year-long cool spring fed that. stream from top all the way to bottom in the entire Sandia mountain range. It is fairly small and unimpressive. A lot of it directly underneath us here is being soaked up by the tall, healthy timber pines, blue spruces, and ponderosas down below. But for the wildlife in the area and for hikers with the proper equipment, it really is a great source of hydration to come upon. Just to name a few of the wildlife home to the Sandias, we do have black bear, mule deer, mountain lions, bobcats, ringtail cats, red and gray fox, chupacabras, wild turkeys, about 200 different species of small songbird. We do see a fair share of peregrine falcons, red-tailed hawks, and golden eagles for our predatory birds. Um, unfortunately, Sandias is no longer home to longhorn sheep. From the literature I read below, domesticated sheep had spread disease to the wildlife here in the Sandias and had taken them out over time. <coughs> You've got lots of pink and red tint inside of this 90% granite mound. This is mainly thanks to a mineral inside known as potassium feldspar. It does work in correlation with quartz and mica. During our sunset from Albuquerque, uh, it reflects a bright, beautiful pink glow back at the city. And that is one of the original reasons believed for the naming of the Sandias. Sandia being Spanish for watermelon. Lastly here, this is the third and final canyon we embark over on our way to the top. This is known as Domingo Baca Canyon, given its name after a famous gentleman known as Domingo Baca, given a generous land grant to the state of New Mexico in the mid-1900s. Mm. 
Now there's something interesting to see here at Domingo Bach. It's a bit hard to get the eye on though. If we take a look up off to the top of the tallest left-hand peak and follow the skyline, see a small square rock house structure at the very tip. Just look for the little window on the side wall. This is known as Kiwanis Cabin, originally built out of wood in the year 1933 by the Civilian Conservation Corps to build roads and trails up here. It actually pioneered most of what's still used today. It was struck by lightning in 1937 and had burnt to the ground. I do not know why, but they rebuilt a second Kiwanis Cabin out of wood again, only to find out that the, that the mountains up here see wind speeds of well over 100 miles per hour did blow off the top of that peak, just like the story of them three little pigs. They finally got it together and they used the sedimentary limestone you folks see crusting the granite rock of the Sandias to build that last cabin and it's been standing ever since. It's no longer in any official use folks. It is a beautiful hike to go visit. It's a mile and a half to the cabin and a mile and a half back from where we dock up top. From that cabin you can see 11% of the entire state of New Mexico in a 360 degree view. Right around here, we're entering the final vegetation zone. Uh, this mountain does not have a tree line. We've got vegetation the entire way up. Past the 10,000 foot mark here is known as the Hudsonian, where we have lots of thick conifers, spruce firs, and timber pines. Lots of dead scrub oak filling in the middle. That'll come back and look beautiful. And we do got a few veins of aspen up here as well that like to grace us with their presence throughout the year. All right, guys, we're slowing down. We have just about made it to 10,378 feet. All right, guys, uh, we are having a little bit of wind up here, which means one of these corners will make contact with one of those bumpers before the other, causing some bumps. Folks, please hold on. We got about four or five. Smooth on, Drea. Ooh, good driving, girl. All right, thank you. All right, guys, maybe another couple bumps as soon as we hit those back bumpers up there. It'll take them just a moment to open the doors for you guys. They gotta wait for this little green light to go out, indicating to them the system is at a full stop. Now, when they do open the doors, guys, please watch your step. Please mind the gap. You folks enjoy the top of the mountain. You guys enjoy life. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.